pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of your glory upon your people. Thank you, Lord, because of the triumph, because of the victory that you have brought unto us. Lord, we pray all these things you have given us that will give us a breakthrough through our lives where we'll never lose them in Jesus' name. The victory you have given us here, the triumph you have given us here, the dominion you have given us here, oh Lord, will keep it until the end in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, those who are still feeling weak in the body, in the spirit, we pray that your mighty power will come down, energize and strengthen them in Jesus' name. We pray. Everyone will have a taste of your power, of the victory, of the triumph, and will go back home strong in the Lord, in Jesus' name. As we come together, whatever gift you want to give us, whatever strength you want to give us, we say, oh Lord, we're open, we're receptive. Give us all that we need in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, within us, our inner man will be strengthened. Even the outer man will receive health, vigor, vitality in Jesus' name. Bless your people. And make sure you supposed to bless other people. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ, through Him that loved us. That single verse I've read to you, verse 37, is sandwiched between two verses before and two verses after. Verses 35 and 36, and then verses 38 and 39. And then you have this middle verse, verse 37. And it says, Nay, in all these things, what is? What was he referring to? Where do we have the victory? Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or farming, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It's after that, after recounting, after enumerating, after listening. All the things that confront believers in many ages, at different times, he now says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Two verses after that, see what it says. For I am persuaded that neither death no life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come. Before I go on, do you see any kind of grading, any kind of increase, any kind of stepping up? The other ones were read, they just talked about tribulation and distress persecution and famine and nakedness and peril and sword. But now it comes to this. He said, even go beyond that, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, 
nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. It says, even the kind of thing that the devil may be thinking of bringing out of his paws, out of his pocket, things to come, they are not here yet. He saying, the devil can never bring any surprise that we are not up to, that we are not ready for. Things present, the things we see, and things to come, the things we don't even know about yet. And then he says, no light, no death, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want you to notice something, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I want you to notice the latter part of verse 39. It says, All this is that shall not be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's like he opens the bracket in verse 35. What shall separate us? He enumerates many things. He closes the bracket. He says there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And then right in the middle, at the center, the very nucleus of everything, in verse 37, he says their name in all these things. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. I said we are more than conquerors. Before we go on, we need to identify who Paul the Apostle by the Spirit of God is talking about. When he said we, not they. He didn't say they are more than conquerors. It's we. But the question is who? At the we, Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Those are the people that are more than conquerors, justified people, saved people, cleansed people, people who are who have peace with God. They are not at enmity with God. They are not contrary to God. They are not in opposition to God. We, the we he spoke about, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 2, by whom we have access by faith. These are the people that have manifested faith. They have come out of the world. They have come out of under the dominion of the God of this world. And they have come in association, affiliation, interaction with the Lord. Because now there is a union between these people and the Lord. Such people who are peace with God. Such people who have been reconciled with God. Such people whose condemnation and guilt have been taken away. Such people that have believed in the Lord, and through that, they have this relationship with the Lord. Those are the we who are more than conquerors, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand. Those who are standing, standing by faith, Standing in their conviction, standing in the word, standing with the Lord. Those are the people when it says, Nay, in all this is we are more than conquerors. That we are the people who are standing for righteousness. They are standing for the truth and they are standing for the Lord. And it says, And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, 
those are the people when trials come, when temptations come, when tribulation comes, when persecution comes. They do not turn the back and they run away. They say, I'm going to stand. I will stand and endure anything for Christ. They said, I know that's my, part of my calling. And I know all these things work together for good. For them who are the called of God, who are called according to his purpose. Therefore, we glory in tribulation. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Those are the we. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. These are the people in their heart, they have the love of God. And then it says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's the we he was talking about when it says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. These are children of God. These are believers. These are Christians. These are the people who are washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm looking at chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What's the answer? God forbid. Those are the we. The we who know that when we come to Christ, we do not continue in sin that grace may abound. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we? These are the we. The people who are more than conquerors. They are the people that will say like Joseph, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death, therefore we, these are the people, brothers and sisters, when he talks about nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Who are they? They are the people in verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Those are the people. These are the people who are more than conquerors through Christ. They understand? They have come into the kingdom. They have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They have been planted together with Christ. They have been baptized in water. And they have identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, verse 6, that our old man is crucified with him. These people who are more than conquerors, they are the people, they have the old man crucified. The Adamic nature crucified. The inbred sin crucified. The self-life crucified. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. The body of sin. The nature of sin. The root of sin. The generator of sin. That is the original root that generates sin into our lives. It says that root, that body of sin destroyed. And henceforth we should not serve sin. Those are the people. I pray you'll be among the number. I said you'll be among the number. Then will you be able to rise up in the wings of faith and say, Nay, in all these things, we 
and more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are part of us already. More than conquerors in the evil day. In the evil day. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There is an evil day in the world because of the devil in the world. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the evil day. That she may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, more than conquerors, in the evil day, the Lord will give you the victory. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the conflicts against Christians in the evil day. The conflicts, how can you conquer if there's no conflict? How can you win if there is no battle? It's because there is a test. That's why there's a testimony. It's because there is a battle. That's why there is a conqueror. And there are conflicts set against the believers. Number one, the conflicts against Christians in the evil day. Number two, the confidence of conquerors in the evil day. Don't be a coward in the evil day. Don't cringe in the evil day. Don't compromise in the evil day. By the way, Satan does not reward a compromiser on the evil day. If the devil is fighting against you, and you bend, and you yield, and you compromise. Satan is not going to reward your humility, or your meekness, or your compromise. He'll knock off your head. If you show weakness, meekness, and if you show timidity in the evil day, in front of the devil, he'll knock you off. Therefore, the conqueror must be confident in the Lord. The confidence of conquerors in the evil day. You will stand against whatever the devil may throw at you. You will overcome. Number three, our consolation in Christ in the evil day. Our consolation in Christ in the evil day. Number one, the conflicts against Christians in the evil day. Let's come back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall one tribulation, two distress, three persecution, Four, farming. Five, nakedness. Six, peril. Seven, or sword. You know, whatever Satan does, whatever the messengers of Satan do, they have only one goal, only one purpose, to separate you from the love of Christ. You love Christ because he loved you. Because he gave himself for you. Because he suffered for you. Because he went through that agony on your behalf. Because he bore your punishment. Because he's going to heaven to make a place for you. That's why you love him. And Satan doesn't like, love, admire Christ. And anyone that puts their love, their desire, 
on Christ, their affection on Christ, Satan hates it. The only reason, maybe you are wondering, why all this? Why all this? Why all that? It's because of your love for Christ. And whatever Satan does, his goal ultimately is to separate you from the love of Christ. He will try, but he will not succeed. He will fail. He has failed already. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? As we read that verse, maybe you want to think. Think about people, people, people who somewhere around you, somewhere around your home, who is that person, a rival to Jesus Christ? Think. Look through life. Who is that person? Who is that man? Who is that woman? That the devil will identify. That the devil knows you love him so much. He's so much part of you. If he says, I quit, then you say, if you quit, what am I doing here? If that person says, I'm leaving, it's likely you say, if you are leaving, what am I doing here? The devil will make use of somebody in your life that you love more than Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? As you think through life, and you think about everybody that you know, anybody that is close to you, is there somebody that if the person quits, if the person leaves the kingdom of God, that person will be able to have enough power, enough magnetism to draw you away from the Lord. That's what, that's what Paul was saying. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Then he begins to bring out something. Number one, tribulation. You know that tribulation doesn't just rise up from the dust. Tribulation comes through people. And then distress, that doesn't just come in the air. It comes through circumstances and situations and people, the society. And then it goes on. The Lord had told us before that, you know, some little, little problems will arise. The people of the world, they kick up something, they raise up something, but all those things they raise up will not be able to separate you from the love of Christ. Let's see them. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for, his name, for my name's sake. You, you know, that, uh, that's, something, uh, that's something that gets against our, 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 our hearts. We love people to love us, to smile at us, and to greet us, and to be friendly with us. And to say good morning, how are you there? We want people to fellowship with us and to appreciate us. What he, because you have become a Christian, because you are now a child of God, and the news has spread that you are now a child of God, a follower of Christ, a lover of Christ. And that your soul, your mind, your heart is dedicated unto the Lord. Your evenings are for Bible study, prayer meeting, this or that. You are in the house of God. And they come to look for you. They cannot find you. And then that person that was your bosom friend said, I came last night. I couldn't find you at home. Where did you go? Oh, I've become a Christian now, a believer now. I went for Bible study. I went for prayer meeting. I went for night vigil. I went to worship the Lord. And that fellow said, That's what you want to be doing now. If we're going to remain friends, you have to reconsider that. 
And then you say, but you know, it's so, it's so wonderful to serve Christ, to love the Lord. And I've made up my mind, this decision is going to be forever. And that fellow just gives you a kind of look, belittles you as if the ground should open and should enter in. That thing hurts. It hurts. Hatred. And then he begin to spread it all around. It's gone to the fanatical people. It's gone with the people that swallow the whole Bible. It's gone with the people that believe the whole Bible. It's gone with the people that practice every letter and every jot and every teacher. That man is crazy. And everybody begins to show that hatred. What are you going to do at that time? That's what the Lord is talking about. The tribulation. The distress. The injury that comes to our heart. When those persecutors, when they just boycott us, separate us from their company. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. Will you endure to the end? I can tell you will by the grace of God. John chapter 16. In John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. And you know the reason why I love Christ? He doesn't hide anything from us. He tells us the plain truth. He says, as there is day, there's going to be night. He doesn't deceive us. As there is dry season, so there is going to be rainy season. He does not deceive us. As I love you, so the world is going to hate you. As I'm taking care of you, the world will try to put pressure on you. Christ is sincere. He doesn't paint a picture that is not real. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if Christ has overcome the world, we in Christ, with Christ, by the grace of God, we shall overcome the world in Jesus' name. But you know the truth is there. Revealed by the Lord himself. Trials will be there. Persecution will be there. If you have just given your life to the Lord, and then as you go back home, you are going to find out because your parents will change. Your language will change. The places you go, you'll not go there anymore. Everything will change. And then you begin to carry your Bible everywhere you go. And you read your Bible, you love your Bible. And then people are going to notice. And first of all, they're going to tease you. They're going to ask questions. And they're going to be sarcastic about it. And they're going to be abusive, insulting about it. Get ready. That, that, that's the prize. That's what we get into. Because we identify with Christ. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And we look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. From verse 21 to verse 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They returned unto those places. And it says they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. You know, the Bible is wonderful. I said the Bible is wonderful. You know, the people in the world, they can teach us theory. They can build up skyscraper. 
And yet, it's all imagination. There's no reality there. But look at this Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle. I'm going to back up now. And I'm going to read from verse, uh, from verse 19. And there came thither certain, certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Notice that, Antioch and Iconium. And it says, who persuaded the people? Having stoned and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Paul the Apostle in Antioch and Iconium, because of his stand for the Lord, they picked up stones, they stoned him, real, not a, not a dream. He fell down and they stoned him there. And when they looked at him and they thought he was dead, then they let him alone. And they were told in verse 20, how be it as the disciples stood round about him. He rose up, you will rise up. I said you will rise up. What can the world do until you finish your assignment the Lord has given you? Look at Paul the Apostle. And you know, we're going to the same heaven that Paul the Apostle went to. And they stoned him until they thought he was dead. And you don't want to stand a little insult, a little abuse, a little treatment, a little persecution. Nobody is stoning you. If he stood, all that he went through, you will stand. And then it says, he stood up and he came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. In the place where they face the greatest kind of problem, persecution in their lives. They return there. When we have the grace of God, you will return there. You will not say, I cannot go to that place again. I cannot do anything in that place again. There are souls there to be won. You'll come back. I said you'll come back. They were not afraid of the devil, and they were not afraid of the messengers of the devil. Verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. That's what they find on the way to heaven. And if we're going to go to heaven, going to get to heaven, there's no other way. The way that leads to heaven has persecution and trial and tribulation and difficulty on the way. But by the grace of God, we're going to go through. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, we're reading from verse 12. First Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. The Lord is telling us ahead of time, not everybody in the world will smile at you. Not everybody in the world will appreciate your rigid stand for the doctrines of the Bible. Not everybody in the world will appreciate your love for Christ. Not everybody in the world will appreciate your devotion to the Word of God. Therefore, persecution will come. Don't think it's strange when it comes. The Lord has told us ahead of time. Then in verse 13, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, 
that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached, abused, insulted, assaulted, persecuted, slandered, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. You will glorify the Lord. Second Timothy chapter 3. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Yea, yes, truly, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Are you going to live godly? As you go back home, will you live a godly life? In your office, will you live a godly life? When they want to change the receipt, and they say, put your signature, will you cooperate with them? No. And if you don't cooperate with them, if you block their way, and you say, look at this man, look at this lady, Madam Jesus, look at her. She will not allow us to take the money, to steal the money we want to steal. They will not like you. You live godly in Christ. You're going to suffer persecution. If the market people say contribute money so that our market can sell well for idolatry, will you contribute money? No. Will they like you? No. Be ready for that. And after all, it's just a short time before love will be on the other side. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Maybe you say, things will change. The government is trying to eradicate corruption. And when they eradicate corruption, there will be righteousness. And then at that time, if I take my stand, nobody will oppose me. Huh. It will never be. The world is corrupt to the core. And the more the people of the world fight corruption in their own way, the more that corruption is increasing. Look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax better and better. What is it? If you think they are bad now, wait until next year. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. What are we to do? I said, what are we to do? Verse 14. But, but, tell me, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the distress, in the midst of the oppression, in the midst of the challenges, continue. And you know, there's some people, they're taking their stand, they're living the righteous life, they're following after the Lord. I've decided to follow Christ, no turning back, no turning back. Even though the world may be against me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The Lord is preparing another kingdom. I will be there, no turning back, no turning back. No friends forsake me. Still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. And then a little fire, a little heat comes against them because of the decision they are taking. And then they are considering, I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel tired, I feel weak, I feel unhappy, I feel distressed. I don't know whether I want to go to church today, get up and come to church, and the Lord will give you strength in Jesus' name. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou as lunch them. How do we continue? How do we have strength to continue in the evil days? Psalm 16. 
In Psalm 16, we're reading verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. That's how to continue. When you see the Lord before you all the time, walking ahead of you, leading the way before you, you'll be strong. I have set the Lord before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Psalm 46. Psalm 46, verse 5. God is not the midst of harm. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The Lord will help you. Psalm 62, verse 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 5. My soul waits only upon God. For my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength. My refuge is in God. Trust Him. Trust in Him at all times. When a persecution arises, trust in Him at all times. Psalm 112, Psalm 112, 112, verse 6 and verse 7. Surely He shall not be moved. You will be moved. He shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. That's how we get our confidence. Point number two. Confidence, the confidence of conquerors in the evil day. The confidence of conquerors in the evil day. Romans chapter 8. Verse 37, Romans chapter 8, verse 37, Nay, what's, what's the meaning of nay? That means no. Why this word no? Because of the answer to the question, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then Paul the Apostle began to ask one by one, Shall tribulation? Nay. No. Shall distress? Nay. That means no. Shall persecution? Nay. No. Cannot be. I have a farming? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Or such? No. Nothing will separate you from Christ. Then it says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ, through Him that loves us. That's our confidence. There is a God in heaven who is interested in our lives. He is interested in our security. He is interested in our protection. He is interested in our preservation. And because of Christ, who sits on the throne and is watching over us and is interceding for us, that's why we have the confidence to remain a conqueror and we're going to remain conquerors in Jesus' name. Psalm 27. In Psalm 27, reading from verse 1. Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. 
they will fall. Before they get to you, they will stumble. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. You'll be confident. Because in Second Corinthians chapter 10, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. Every stronghold in your life will be pulled down. You will lead to see the day of victory, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's why there's nothing to fear. The Lord will moderate, supervise everything that comes to you. Nothing beyond your strength will be allowed to come to you. That's why you are going to overcome. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. That's what God will do. He will not allow anything beyond your strength to come unto you. If anything comes, look around the corner. There is strength. Ability, courage, confidence. There's something God has given you there that will make you overcome. But God is faithful. Who will not permit you, allow you, suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will, will the temptation also make a way to escape that she may be able to bear it. You will bear it. But you'll need to put on the whole armor of God by looking at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. He is available. His strength is available. His power is available for you. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. Put it on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, Against spiritual wickedness in high places. And all those people that Paul the Apostle referred to striving, battling, in conflict, wrestling with powers of darkness. He overcame. Now they are in heaven waiting for us. And they are watching that as they put on the whole armor and they overcame. If we put on the same armor, we are going to overcome. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. Anybody can stand when there's no temptation, when everybody is friendly, when there's no problem, when there's no scarcity. Anybody can worship God, anybody can read the Bible, anybody can feel happy. When there's enough money, enough food, when everybody is helping us, when everybody is respecting us, anybody can serve God in easy situations. The challenge is when things turn around, when persecution comes, when there is a need in our lives, and when friends turn to become foes, and when people that used to flatter us, when they now despise us and insult us, the challenge is that at that time, 
when the flatterers become the despisers that were still able to stand and worship God. That's the beauty. That's the glory. But you know to say I'm serving God and there's no challenge, there's no problem, there's no persecution. That's easy. Anybody can do that even without grace. The evidence of the grace of God is that when the persecution is there, when the insult is there, when the challenges are there, that we're able to stand, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins got about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many free darts? All oh, take that faith, take that faith. That shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. If we do that, we'll overcome. I'm, I'm sure you have even overcome already. You will go from strength to strength and from power to power. And if Jesus tarries and were to be here again, I will see you and you will see me. And then we'll share testimonies of victory together in Jesus' name. And let me show you. I'm, I'm reading something to you now. This is your story. This is your story. You would like to, you like to see your story in the Bible. Job chapter 17 verse 9. Job chapter 17 verse 9. The righteous, I did there. The righteous shall hold on his way. That's your story. Don't change the story. You will hold on. And you will keep on. And then it says, And he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. Is that you? If you are strong, will you fall? If you become stronger and stronger, and the people of the world, they frown at you, will you crumble? Will you compromise? They will be stronger and stronger. The Lord will sustain you. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. That's the amen you can, you can say. Verse 27. The eternal God. God is thy refuge. Underneath you at the everlasting arms. That's why I'm sure I will see you again. You'll be growing stronger and stronger in there. No matter what the world throws at you, you will stand. They say like the rock of Gibraltar, and you will stand. Point number three, our consolation in Christ in the evil day. Our consolation. In Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 38. This is our consolation. For I am persuaded. That neither death. Nor life. Nor angels. Nor principalities. Nor powers. Nor things present. Nor things to come. No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. They will try, but they will fail. They will think that they can get you because they got other people. 
and they'll be wondering, can he be stronger? Can she, can she be stronger than the other people were brought now? They'll make the greatest mistakes of their lives when they come at you because they'll be surprised. He that is in you, they'll find, is greater than he that is in them. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17, Thou therefore guard up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I come before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city. Today, the Lord has made you an iron pillar, bracing walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. Verse 19, this is yours. Say, this is mine. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord will keep you. And then salvation that your God will remain intact in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. For the which cause also... I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. Do you know who you have believed? It's the one that drowned the army of Egypt in the Red Sea. I know whom I have believed. It's the one that made Jericho walls to, fly, to fall down with a shout of praise of the children of God. I know whom I believe is the one that conquered all those armies, enemies that came against Jehoshaphat. I know whom I believe is the one that preserved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace of fire made by Nebuchadnezzar. I know whom I believe is the one that made Daniel to remain in a night in the lion's den and there was no hurt I know whom I believe and you know your belief today he catch them he will keep you and then he says and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which have committed unto him against that day you commit your soul your spirit your life everything you've got you commit it to the hands of the Lord, and the Lord will keep you until that day. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. We're reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Anytime you, you get into any temptation, any trial, any tribulation, any persecution, remember the Lord is praying for you. He died for you. He wants to see you in heaven. And He's preparing a place for you. And He has enough power, sufficient power. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us, befitted us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And that's the reason we know by the grace of God we have overcome already. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. It says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy the power of death. That is the devil. The greatest of your enemies is destroyed already. I said it's destroyed already. 
And then it says, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Verse 18. For him that he himself had suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. He is able to support, sustain, succor you, and he will. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we boldly say, The Lord is my helper. And then it says, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is your helper. All you need to do is just stay in that circle of the love of God. And then in every battle, every challenge, the Lord will see that you win the victory. Jude, from verse 20. But she, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God. Don't allow anything to separate you from the love of God. That's the bone of contention. That's why the devil is waging war. Just to separate you from the love of God. See to it that no matter the winds that blow, the storm that comes, the waves that rise, no matter what happens in the day or in the night, no matter what challenges come, what trials come, no matter the frowns of anyone, no matter the persecution from any persecutor, and no matter the people that want to derail your faith, keep yourselves in the love, the love of God. That's what they are fighting for, your affection, your love, your commitment, your consecration unto the Lord. Keep it, and the Lord will help you. And then His love, His grace will support you and surround you. You will not fail. You will not falter. And the devil will not be able to put your back to the ground in Jesus' name. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Can God keep you from falling? Falling into sin, he'll keep you. Falling into disgrace, he'll keep you from that. Falling into the jest and reproach of the people of the world, he will keep you away from that. Falling into the snare of the enemy, the snare of the devil, he will keep you away from that. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. With well, that amen in your mouth, rise up. And then tell the Lord, I am confident, I am sure, I am persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, death nor height, angels or demons, anyone, anywhere, I'm persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Make up your mind. The everlasting arms are underneath you. As your days 
so shall your strength be. He is able to succor them who are tempted. He is able to save to the uttermost. You've given your life to the Lord. He has committed himself that the good work he has started, he will accomplish it, continue it, stay by it, watch over it, until the very end. When the flood rises, look unto Jesus. When the persecutors rush at you, look unto Jesus. When the heat of their furnace is getting hot, look unto Jesus. When the negative comments of people, instead of helping you, supporting you, encouraging you instead of lifting you up when their negative attitude is likely to bring you down look unto jesus when familiar friends are turning away from you and you're feeling alone and lonely look unto jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, than a sister. In Jesus' name we pray. God has answered your prayer. He will do more than you have asked Him. The strength to stand. In the evil day, you have that strength already. Nothing will defeat you. Nobody will take you away from the kingdom of God. Where you failed in the past, from today you will succeed. Where you yielded to temptation before God is a merciful God, is forgiveness available for you. From now on, the strength and the grace to stand firm in the Lord, the Lord has given it to you. I rejoice with you. I congratulate you. You are the victor, the victoria of today. Conquerors, overcomers. Your joy, nobody will ever take it away from you. God is preparing another kingdom. You will be there. Father, in the name of Jesus. You are a God that loves your children, the strong and the weak, the low and the high, the new ones and the old timers. You love everyone. Lord, I pray everyone will have a feel, feeling for that love in Jesus' name. The assurance, the confidence, the affirmation that you will keep your child there, give it to her, give it to him, in Jesus' name. All the arrows of the devil, all the temptations of the enemy, all the trials coming from the other side, by the shield of faith, we quench everything. We destroy everything. Yours is the power. 
Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. In your glory, in your power, raise up your people, lift up your people in Jesus' name. The strength that we need for every day, every challenge, give to your people. According to your promise, our shoes will be iron and brass. According to your promise, as our days, when the days go tougher, our strength will become stronger, will become greater, and your people will be mighty in the Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, make a wall of protection around your people. A wall of fire. Lord, I pray that you, in your might, in your majesty, you will surround your people. Their lives will be hid with Christ in God. No arrow of the enemy will be able to get at them in Jesus' name. Lord, you are preaching our names in your book of life. That name will never be there. Nothing will take it out. The world will not take it out. Sin will not take it out. The flesh will not take it out. We're here today in fellowship with you. In eternity, we're going to be in fellowship with you. Keep your people, Lord. Support your people, Lord. Strengthen your people, Lord. Give us the same victory all around. None of us will yield to the devil. None of us will succumb under the pressure of the enemy. None of us will backslide and go back to the world. That place you've got to prepare for us, my brother there will be there. My sister there will be there. Our youths will be there. Our children will be there. We'll be there together. And then in heaven, we're going to sing hallelujah together. Confirm it, O oh Lord, by your mighty power, in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.